One of my favorite features of Next.js is Next Image. This custom component was designed to make images load faster and eliminate layout shifts across different screen sizes and different network environments as well. Now, when it comes to loading performance, three major features that Next Image provides us. One is optimized image formats based on the browser you're using. Second is optimized image sizing based on what device you're using. And the third is making image loading non-blocking for page loads. But just how much faster is Next Image? Now, let's explore its performance gains relative to the normal image component. For this, I've just gone ahead and set up a very simple test dummy project to help us figure out what these performance gains look like. Just the standard Next.js project, and I've just removed all the boilerplate. And on the right here, I'm just in the index file, put some code in here that we'll go through in a second. And then in the bottom right, I've just pulled up the performance monitor for the web page loading, and I'm specifically just on the network tab here. Just a quick overview of this project that I've set up. I have created this component here called Image Test Bench. And so inside here, this test bench takes an image. You can ignore the error right now. It's just TypeScript complaining because I haven't typed it, which is fine. And what I've done here is I'm just loading the same image using the normal image component and also using the Next.js image component. So for the image component, I'm just passing in the image directly and then doing some styling primarily for sizing the image just visually. And for the next image component, I've also passed in the image you can see. One thing that's somewhat annoying with next image that I found sometimes is figuring out how to style it specifically when it comes to sizing. So the trick I typically use is I surround the image component in a div. And on the div is where I set all of the styling for sizing. So you can see here saying the width and also an aspect ratio for the div. And then I simply on the image component then set this fill property, which tells the component to fill this parent div and also just set the object fit to be cover as well. Now, the other thing I've done is I've also passed this sizes property. And this is just for further optimization on the image component, just in a nutshell. By default, the next image component will request images of size 100 view width. So it's still optimized for the device in a sense, but they are very large images. And in most cases, we don't actually need the image to be that large. So in this case, I've just said, okay, we can request images of size 50 view width. Okay, so that's the overview of the test bench here. And now what I've just done up, up above is set up three different scenarios for us to test. The first one that I want to test is just loading a static image at its original size. For this, just gone ahead and pulled a high-res image off of Unsplash that's about three megabytes. And I think the resolution is like 5,000 by 2,500 or so. So quite a large image. So let's go here and just uncomment this image bench out. I'm going to hit save. And we can see the image loads. And let me just refresh page. Here we go. So now it shows up here in the bottom right. And a couple of things just to notice here, right? So the first thing is that the next image component has converted our image to the WebP format, which is a much better optimized format, which is supported by most browsers nowadays. Next thing you'll notice is this big size difference. So already that's, you can see a massive difference. This is like a almost like 25 X improvement in the size of the file here. Obviously in terms of the loading time for these images, it's pretty similar. That's just because my internet's pretty quick. But if we slow the network here, or let's just even just make it fast 3G and I reload this and I've also disabled the cache so you can really see what's going on. I've had to speed it up because it took so long. But you can see is absolutely massive time improvements here now of more than 10x, almost 15x time improvements. So absolutely massive improvements just from swapping the image component for our next image. Let's do one other comparison here for this static image. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of passing the original image, I went ahead and did a small optimization on my end to do some compression of the image. And for this, I use this service called Squoosh. And I believe this was developed and is maintained by Google. And this is a image optimization tool that's open source. As an example, if I just drop an image here, you can see here, it can do a lot of different optimizations. What I would typically do here is do some sort of compression. And then I also went ahead and did here is I did a resize as well, which brought it down even further. And you can see here it reduced the size by 80% of this image. 
we did some of that optimization. Let's see how that compares now still to next image. So let me comment out the first test and let's now load this next test in. Okay, and here I've gone ahead and just left the network throttling on still because honestly it makes this a lot more interesting. And you can see here, even with the optimization of our image on our end, it did improve a lot, decrease the size by 80%. But you can see even doing that optimization and just passing that to next image, next image does even more stuff, does further size optimizations and therefore makes the bit load even faster. And again, also converts the format to WebP, which is more performant. The final test I want to run here is for a dynamic image. So in this case, pulling an image from a URL. So here I've just gotten an, another image here from Unsplash and I'm gonna load it using, just remotely using the URL. So let's go ahead and reload this page now with the remote image. All right, so we can see similar improvements again, even from loading a remote image. So again, if you look at the size here, the two images, there's a five to six X improvement from a size perspective, which translates to 10x improvement in the loading time, uh, which is again, pretty, pretty massive. And again, does the format conversion as well for us to make this load even faster. Now, I think the last thing that would be really important to demonstrate here as well is the non-blocking behavior of image loading. So for this, let me comment in everything again, all of the different test cases, and let me and we can already start seeing actually some of the behavior here, but I want to just show this blocking behavior here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and just comment out the next image implementations and just do the regular image. If I hit save and reload the page, so I go ahead and loaded the page here and it took a while. It took 36 seconds total for it to load. But the one thing I want to call out here is this DOM content loaded. So this is saying it took 24 seconds almost for the DOM content to load. And the reason it took so long is because it was waiting for the images to load in before showing and rendering any of the DOM and doing a first paint. And you can see here in this chart at the top here, this orange line represents when you start to see stuff on screen and you can see it waited essentially until all these images had come in to actually start painting on the web page. And this obviously is really poor, right? Because you just get a blank page for over 20 seconds. But now let's see what happens when we switch off of the image component and into the next image component. I'm going to refresh the page here. Great. And now we can see here, total page load time obviously came down to nine seconds. This is the same as what we saw earlier, right? That's just because the images load a lot quicker, but you can see that the, now the DOM content loaded also in nine seconds. It didn't wait until the images all loaded in, which in this case took a total of over 12 seconds. It painted the website even before the images finished loading. You can see that here, there's some loading that happened earlier, but then the first paint happened and then a bunch of these images loaded afterwards to fully come in. That's the this two or three seconds is everything after the original paint. So it's a lot better experience. You don't have to sit there and wait as well for these images to load to start getting some stuff on the page, even this text. So as you can see, next image can hugely improve your website performance, in some cases up to 10x. And it really especially shines in suboptimal network conditions. So we we'll definitely encourage you all to adopt it in your projects. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments and I'll try to get to as many of them as I can. And if you want to see more projects that use Next Image, there are quite a few on this channel. I'll put one on screen now for you to check out next and I'll see you in the next video.